going to show you how the camera works. You call up the camera most easily by just pressing down on the shutter button for a second. You can see it's a two-stage shutter button here. If we press lightly, the camera focuses. You can see that there's a green box around the focus area. Press it all the way to take the picture. Now, this is some flaky firmware in this version, and you can see as the screen flashes white, and it's a little bit odd. You know, the, the camera's not functioning as perfectly as it probably should. Picture's taken. We can take another one just by pressing down on the shutter button again. Call up the menu for some options. Turn the flash on and off, put it to automatic mode, change resolution, uh, change the quality that it saves everything at, and where it saves it, whether you know on the media card or the built-in storage. Gestures for zooming, just as if you had the trackball up and down, zooms in and out, or left and right. Pretty easy to use, um, but because of some of the orientation sensor bugs that seem to be in this version of firmware, uh, sometimes the pictures don't seem to be auto-rotated properly, so you might have to do that manually after the fact. If you want to look at the pictures, you call up the menu and you can either click on View Pictures or pressing the menu key again will select the default item. Pick one of the pictures here. And then you can use swipe gestures to move through the images. Activate the video camera down here. Look at the options. You can see that it shoots QVGA resolution video, 320 by 240. You can also shoot lower resolution, which is more appropriate for MMS messages. Here's the multimedia app. It allows you to record voice notes, look at the pictures like we did from the camera, see ringtones, also the video player and the music player. First we'll show you sample video. It's the Babylon AD, a Vin Diesel movie trailer. You see the video quality is pretty good on this large display. Go back to the music app here. And you can see it organizes music just like you would expect it to. We used um, the Roxio player, which is included on the CD. And you can look at your music by you know, band name, album name, or whatever you like. It's a lot easier to control the device, the music player, with um, fingers than it is with the trackball. Just tap and click. And of course, it plays in the background. So while you're using the device for other things, because the music's playing in the background, you can always quiet the music by pressing on the mute key. It'll restart and you press it again. It'll also pause automatically when a call comes in or something like that. I'm going to show you some of the applications that are available on the device. You can see there's a Flickr client. We downloaded and installed Google Maps. The BlackBerry Facebook client is also available. BlackBerry devices ship with their own mapping application. And then there's the organizer things, you know, task list, memo pad, Word document reader. It's the read-only version of the applications. You'll have to upgrade to get the right version. And Google Sync for syncing the calendar to the Google Calendar. A lot of these apps come through the application center, which instead of preloading everything on the device ahead of time, basically the carriers can set up a bunch of applications that they can make available easily just through the app center, then you download the ones that you want. Based on the asterisk on the visual voicemail icon down here at the bottom, you can see that we have new voicemail. And 
just by hitting the play button, we can listen to the message. This is a test voicemail message sent to the BlackBerry Storm 9530 for Verizon Wireless so that we can test up. And you can pause it in mid-message and you can you know, move the play voicemail bar around and to listen to things Black again, or you can just quickly delete them, all without having to dial into the mailbox. So that's our look at the Research in Motion BlackBerry Storm 9530 for Verizon Wireless. Very good looking device, very innovative device. First smartphone to have a clickable touch screen. It has that nice capacitive touch screen functionality where it takes light touches to activate, but that click gives it a little more functionality. You can do some really neat things with the user interface. Problem is, the device's firmware seems to be uh, buggy. It's not ready for prime time. The accelerometer doesn't work that well. It seems to get stuck and a lot of times applications just take too long to load. We're not sure if this is going to be fixed right away or eventually, but we, we are pretty sure that these kind of things will be dealt with eventually. Maybe at the moment you, you ought to test it out before you go ahead and buy. But personally, I really like this device. This is the first BlackBerry device to really make me think that I could possibly switch to this. So it has a lot of things going for it. It just needs to have a few bugs ironed out. It's available from Verizon Wireless right now.